Hi, I'm Phyllis from SouthernFrugal.com. Well, we're getting ready to fix some supper tonight. Uh, we're going to have our sandwich. We're going to have an uh, egg salad sandwich with maybe a little salad and maybe we can think of something for dessert. But anyway, uh, I wanted to share with y'all some of the things that we're planning to do. But first, let's get these eggs on. So what I've got is uh, a pot of just regular tap water back here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that up on high and put in three large eggs. And I'm going to show you how I learned to do these. And I learned to do them from, uh, I'll go get it, hold on. This is a little booklet from the 1960s that came from the Egg uh, American Egg Board. And they were in Illinois. And this is, y'all remember some of the advertisements, the incredible edible egg, and then kind of eggs fell into, uh, fell out of popularity because people thought they increased the cholesterol and all that. But anyway, this little booklet uh, tells how to cook hard boiled eggs. And uh, I'll just read this to you. It says to uh, put the eggs in a single layer in a saucepan and uh, then, let me see, add enough uh, tap water to cover them by one inch. So I've got to add more water. Hold on. Now we've got it. To cover the eggs uh, by one inch, and then, I've been doing this for a long time, I hope to not have to read it, right? Uh, and so then you want to cover them and bring them up just to a boil. You don't want them to boil, you want to bring them just to a boil. And um, then what you do is cut the burner off and let them sit there depending on the size of the egg. Now if it's an extra large egg, you want to leave it sitting there 15 to 17 minutes. If it's an, a large egg, which is what I've got, we're going to leave it sitting there for about 15 minutes in this water, still on the burner, but with the burner off. Actually, I might move it off the burner because I think it might start boiling if I didn't. But anyway, uh, then uh, the question that uh, Patrick had, one of the subscribers, was, how do you get the shell off the egg? In other words, I'm sure he was saying, how do you get the shell off without tearing up the white part too, you know? And it is hard, but there's a technique and it works, okay? So, we're gonna let this come almost to a boil. And while that's happening, I wanna tell y'all what we're so excited about. As y'all know, uh, we bought property up in Mountain Rest I think last January is when we went to look at it and gave them a contract and then of course we ended up buying the land I think about maybe six weeks later or something. Anyway, y'all seen the property up there. So our original plan was to build a house, but uh, now we have decided on building a tiny house on a trailer. I know y'all seen those on the internet. We have been looking at them, I'm going to say probably two and a half years on the internet and watching the progress that people have made, watch people build them and all that. Now we've never taken a course or you know gone for a little seminar or anything on them, but we both got some building experience. In fact, we've got a lot of building experience to do with just this house and then rental property that we had for years. Uh, the only thing that we have never done is to put in a foundation. and. Uh, we don't need a foundation, all we need is the trailer. So anyway, that's what we're going to be about and we will be videotaping all of that, but it's going to take a while to, to do that. And we're also, of course, putting this house on the market just as soon as it gets warm weather this year. And uh, we've got plenty of time, you know, to sell it for sure. But we're going to go ahead and start building our tiny house. I am so excited to be able to have a house that's going to be little, and they say you can clean them from top to bottom in an hour. I mean, that would just be heaven to me. Uh, so uh, we're definitely going to do it, and we're going to, uh, you know, make some other changes up there in our Mountain Rest property too. 
but we're going to concentrate on building that tiny house and uh, we're going to get rid of all of our furniture. We've got a lot, lot of antiques in this house, but we're going to sell everything and then we're going to be free. I think we're going to be free, which will be wonderful to do whatever we want to, travel, whatever. You know, we'll be, we'll be free to do that. And we've already done a lot of traveling in our lives, but uh, I'm talking about not having to worry about what's at home. Actually, we can take the tiny uh, house with us because it'll be just like an RV, only it'll be exactly like what we want. So we've already, uh, you know, picked out different things to go in it and we know the way we want it. So basically, we'll have two recliners. Just And really, that's what we do now. Our den's got two recliners in it and that other uh, gooseneck rocker. And when somebody comes, it, they want to sit in the den. We have to move a chair in usually, but most of the time we're in the living room, which is plenty of room. But uh, anyway, that's what we're going to do. And it, I am so excited. Mr. Bucky's very excited that we finally made a decision. Now we looked uh, at house plans till we were blue in the face. Okay. Then we looked into okay, we'll just hire an architect and he can draw up the plans. And even then, I couldn't decide what I wanted. I mean, I kept trying to go small, small, and you, I just couldn't find what I was looking for, and I, then I couldn't decide what I wanted. So what the uh, tiny house will do, it decides for you. So it'll have a kitchen, we're going to have a full bath, I, I mean a shower really, you know, in a regular commode. We're not going to have holding tanks or anything like that because the property has already got the, uh, it actually it's got 200 amps worth of power on it, so that's no problem. And uh, we're not going to do holding tanks because we've got uh, a septic tank there and a drain fill and everything's already there. So, I mean, we've got a fence, everything's already there. All we've got to do is build the little house. So, anyway, if y'all have any ideas, let me know. All right, this, the eggs are now right at boiling. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to take it off the burner for a minute, and then we're right at getting ready to really boil up. So we're going to take it off the burner, and I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes, and we're going to leave them sitting right here in the water with the lid on top. You don't want to take the lid off. And uh, once the 15 minutes has passed, we're going to be back, and I'll show you how to get them out of the shell with getting the whole egg all together, not having anything broken off of it. And then we're going to pick some egg salad for sandwiches for supper tonight. Have I talked a lot? I think I have. All right, y'all let me know what you think about this. I know some of you probably know people who live in those uh, tiny houses. Uh, we, we would like to find a trailer that's 28 feet long. We know we can get one that's 26, and that'll work. But if we can get one 28, that would be even better. So uh, anyway, we'll be back in a few minutes, okay? All right, our eggs have been sitting for about 15 minutes in this water that was almost to a boil. So now, we're gonna dump that water out. What I do is shake them, and it kind of cracks them, but we'll just crack them a little more and kind of do it like the book said. Put a little bit of cold water in there. A little bit and just crack them all around. I'm going to dump that water out. Now I'm going to turn the water on. It's going to be just a little bit warm now. You know, not really like cold tap water. Now the book says to have it cold, but I think it works better like this. So then all you do, let me move y'all closer. Oh, my hand's wet. Hold on. There. All right, so what we're going to do is let, see how I pulled off part of the shell there? We're going to let that water run in between the shell and that skin. And the water helps get the shell off without breaking the white in any way. And also, they're slightly cooled now. See? See the shells attached to that thin membrane? 
and it comes right off. All right, we're going to put these down over here while I get them all. All right, let's do it again. Just crack them all around. Now the directions from the uh, those egg people said to roll it around in your hand, but I don't like to do them that way because sometimes you crack them, you crack the whole thing doing it that way. All right, so all you want to do is get under that little skin that's on the egg, and you let that water run in there, and that makes them come off really easy. You see, it works much better if the water's a little bit warm. There we go. Plus, it's nicer on your hands if the water's a little warm. Yeah, there's nothing worse than being, uh, trying to make some uh, deviled eggs, you know, that you're going to take to maybe a church function or something, and have all kinds of little gouge marks in the white of the egg. That doesn't look very nice. And see that water's running in there? There you go. Let's do one more. This one's more cracked than the others were, so maybe this one will be even easier. So just try to get that uh, in where the air sac was. Comes off easier. And you just let that water go right down in there. See, it comes off really, really easy. Well, I gouged that with my fingernail a little bit. But anyway, there it is. All right. Let me move y'all over to the other side. We'll be right back. All right, all I did was dry my pot out and just move y'all over to the other side. I'll show you what one of the eggs looks like. There we go. Perfectly cooked. That egg had a little something on it there. All right, so now we're just going to mash these up. You know what that was? That was a little bit of blood in that egg. I'm going to cut that out completely. Yeah, there's no way to tell that when you're uh, going to boil the eggs. All right, so now what we're going to do is just mash these up with a potato masher. And I like to use the potato masher because you can get them really super mashed up. And that's the way I prefer them, all super mashed up. I've already fixed the salad. Uh, while we were waiting for the eggs to uh, sit for the 15 minutes. And they're completely cooked, so you can actually uh, save electricity by doing it this way. Just, you know, put that lid on it and let it sit for 15 minutes if it's a large egg in the water and don't raise the lid or anything. And they will finish cooking. Got them all mashed up now. Get me another spoon. We're going to put a little bit of mayonnaise in there. Actually, why don't we put a little bit of cider vinegar, just a couple little dribbles. That's good enough right there. A little bit of salt. Probably about a tablespoon or so of mayonnaise. And of course, if you're in the South, you probably want to use Duke's mayonnaise. All right, just mix that up. There you have it, so I didn't have to mess up another bowl or anything. All right, I'm going to make the sandwiches, and we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, here's our supper tonight. We've got the egg salad sandwich. We've got cucumber on a bed of the baby organic lettuce, and all I did was put salt on that. And we've got the balance of the peaches I opened a couple of days ago, along with some fruitcake cookies. And I really like uh, to put uh, ginger snaps in when we have peaches like this but I don't have any, so these are spicy cookies that were left over from Christmas that I froze. And we've got our iced tea, so there it is. All right, let me talk to y'all again. Hold on. Hold on, sorry about the jiggling. 
All right, y'all tell me what you think about what we've decided uh, on making the, uh, the little tiny house on the trailer. Uh, we're pretty firm on that right now. It took us, what, about eight or nine months to finally figure it out, but that's what we want to do. And it will be bigger, hold on, let me change hands. It will be bigger, of course, than the travel trailer. And also, it will have a sleeping loft with uh, the dormers on each side, so we'll have lots of windows. And uh, anyway, I'm sure it's going to work. And we're going to have, uh, instead of ladder to do with the loft, we're going to actually build the little steps in it so the dogs can get up to the loft, too, because they'll have to sleep with us, right? They will. All right, so we will see y'all next time. Y'all leave me, leave me comments and tell me what you think. I know some of you won't agree with it, but we're older, we're retired, we want a real simple life, and we want, uh, I particularly, want a very small place to clean, and I want to pay low electric bills too, so that's part of it. Anyway, we will see y'all next time. Bye for now.